what do you think about a reform forum conference in general and then particularly this theme of the son of god as we might trace it through redemptive history lord has blessed the the, the ministry thus far six years right more than six years now six and a half january 2008 okay you can uh, do the math yeah six six, six and a half almost six and a half years That's amazing. yeah so uh it makes sense to, to have a, a conference start start small and uh, build from there yeah I always find it so exciting and beneficial to talk to other listeners you know and, and to meet people at different conferences and to uh, connect with them I'm hoping we can kind of promote something like that in terms of you know, an event where people can get to know one another and Absolutely. talk about their shared experiences and also get to meet the speakers and talk. I don't know about you, you know, we go to these conferences and sometimes the guys will speak and they'll give a plenary address and everyone lines up to hear them and, and it, it's great and the content's good, but then they, they get whisked away into some sort of private room and you unless, can't ever have any back and forth with them. Unless they personally are committed to doing that and some, some of the speakers, the well-known speakers that we're familiar with that I, you know, I could rattle off their names, are committed to interacting with the people. But I know of others just, just as well known who prefer uh, to not hobnob with the, uh, the folk who've come for the conference. And our goal is that this would be a conference where the speakers uh, get to know the folk who, have a, who are attending the conference. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why uh, we want to keep the attendance relatively low. Because after a certain size, it becomes nearly impossible for the speakers to get to. Yeah, it's meet not. And it's not that they don't with. want to; they just can't. Right, it's yeah. impossible. I mean, it's the same phenomenon that goes on with a church that's large. Right. The pastor, one pastor loses the ability to minister directly to every member of the congregation when you have, you know, upwards of you know, fifteen hundred or, or more members, and that's why you have large pastoral staff on. And so the same dynamic is at work. So we want we want a conference where the speakers will be able to sit there or after or before uh, a, a session will be able to talk with and then during meals perhaps sit down and chat chat over meals with the folk who are coming to the conference. Yeah, yeah. The Son of God thing. What did you have in mind? That sounds well, abstract, but what it is. I think it gives I think it's abstract enough where it allows people to do what they want to do with it in the sense that they can focus on their discipline. But at the same time, it, it offers um, some structure so that the conference as a whole would be moving in one particular direction. Well, our listeners know that we're interested in bringing together all of the various aspects of uh, the study of theology, what is called the encyclopedia. But our, our main focus is on, say, uh, the biblical theological uh, approach and so that would would have to be a big element yeah in any consideration and that's something you can see god. yeah well and that that's definitely the case with the son of god theme if adam's the son of god which mm -hmm. he is he's called that but then also israel is called the son of god mm -hmm. and that they're really the typological son and then that leads into Jesus Christ as second and the last Adam being the eschatological son. The question is, well, how does this theme change over time? Uh, what particular roles do these figures and nation play uh, with regard to our own salvation and, the, and those sorts of things? And what does it mean for us who receive the blessings of Christ and, as Romans 8 says, are revealed to be the sons of God in glory? Exactly. That's a very rich theme that you can address biblical theologically like we have through that type of progression but also apologetically and just straight up systematically um, even in church history yep. it seems like a good topic where you can uh, uh, tackle it from a number of different angles who are the, the, the speakers uh, whether they you know yes. the major speakers and maybe the breakout session speakers if they be different we are looking at, well, we've got agreements in principle from Lane Tipton and Scott Oliphant to be the plenary speakers, so they'll be the main speakers. Each of them would speak 
I believe twice okay. and lead a breakout session. Okay. So two addresses each and a breakout. Now we might have some other lectures, you know, for the whole group, but in terms of other people that we hope to have there involved in leading breakout sessions and just in general interacting with people, be myself, uh, Jim Cassidy, yourself, uh, Jared Oliphant, Jonathan Brack, uh, those are the guys that we really are banking on. Um, and what? So some of us might also give a plenary address if we have room. The schedule's not entirely worked out. Right. But those are the folks you can expect to visit with and to meet and spend time with. And I would imagine we would try to get many more, uh, well, at least to come and be there. Right. In, you know, and perhaps have some additional um, breakout sessions. But in terms of main speakers, Lane Tipton, Scott Alfin. And, and then okay, Reform yeah. Forum regulars. Where is it going to be held? We are going to hold it at Hope Presbyterian Church. It's an OPC congregation in Grays Lake, Illinois. That's the church where I'm the pastor. It is uh, got a nice new building, just three years old. Wow. It's okay. very easy to get to from O'Hare Airport, which makes so it's it in central, Chicago land. Chicago land, north north Chicago land, the northern suburbs they call it. It's in Lake County. But it's very easy to get to right off the interstate, uh, just a mile or two off of Interstate 94, which goes right down. It's very easy to get to from O'Hare. So it's centrally located in the country and also easy enough to get to from O'Hare. But it's not in the whole mix or mess of Chicago stuff where it's... Um, so it's not downtown? No. Nah. Although if somebody it's wants more them, relaxed. They, can go, they can go and visit downtown oh, well in the area. Absolutely. Oh. And we want to do something in the Midwest because the East, especially Philadelphia, has been blessed with so many events. They've had, I mean, it's the first Presbytery. Yes. And so we it's have a Presbyterian, Presbyterian and a Reformed history that, you know, other areas don't have. So. Philadelphia and Grand Rapids are typically the places where, you know, all these conferences happen. And as many people as are in Chicago and the neighboring communities, I would say disproportionately fewer events occur there. You get a lot of evangelical stuff. Right. But in terms with, of reform... and Carroll Stream and all that. Yes, very much so. Those are heavily, you know, historically strong evangelical communities although I don't know if they are so much anymore these days, but generally... Colorado Springs kind of became the mecca yeah. of the evangelical world in the last few years. But still, we would look for, you know, having something that's easy to get to, but also going somewhere else. Some people have said, well, can you do it in Philadelphia? We could, but at the same time, it kind of defeats the purpose. Not the only purpose, right. but one of the purposes. Well, I mean, if this does well, you know, yeah, maybe we'll do we can in think multiple of doing cities. regional conferences, a smaller regional conference rather than aiming for a, a huge national conference. Yeah. But I mean, that's that's a lot. A lot of you know uh, organizations are thinking along that line now, anyways. Yeah. But that would be you know that's up to the Lord working those things out. And again, if you have these micro conferences, it's nice to promote healthy interactions, yeah. not just among the people that are attending, but also between the attendees and the speakers. Yes. And you know, we could do these types of events if they become successful and people enjoy them. We could do them all, all over the place. Right. And one at one point, I was looking at the statistics to the web traffic uh, to our website, reformforum.org. And I was looking at, you know, the major cities where the visitors come from. And Chicago is definitely one of the main cities or metropolitan areas where people visit. Uh, Philadelphia is huge. You know, yeah, every, every place there's a reformed seminary is big, you know. Yeah, San I would Diego, expect Escondido, that. Yeah. Uh, even down, down in Texas and some other places. But there are also some other cities that are a little less known and not as easy to explain and we would like to visit those places.